Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to Coming Home. Everyone at the Rode Planetary Space Alliance is convinced there are more objects in the sky other than Lua, Destiny and Fate. So in order to search for those hidden bodies, they have decided to launch SPOT. Now SPOT stands for the Search for Planetary Objects Telescope. Now that the fairing has been deployed, we can see there is a rather large telescope as the payload for this launch vehicle. And this has been added by the Research Bodies mod. That is the mod that I am running with that hides all of the celestial bodies at the start of a career. And you actually have to search for them, either using a telescope like this in space or using the observatory at the Space Center. Unfortunately, the observatory at the Space Center takes a while longer to search for celestial bodies than launching one of these. So this hopefully should find us something a fair bit quicker. And actually, after having launched this, we did discover a new celestial body far away. We discovered Eidos. More interestingly, well, the Rogue Planetary Space Alliance did discover another body in their home system, the mysterious volcanic moon of Ash. And that is going to be what we're going to be focusing on today. We are going to Ash and we're going to explore. Discovering Eidos gave us a load of science. Research Bodies does that. Whenever you discover a new planetary body, you get a huge dump of science. So I'm going to come into R&D and I'm going to pick a few nodes. I've gone for advanced landing and advanced control for better landing options and for better RCS thrusters. I've also picked up advanced aerodynamics. That way I can build fairings that are larger than 1.5 meters, which is going to be very nice for larger launch vehicles down the road. Now that we have discovered Ash, it's time to actually design something to do a flyby. Initially, what I want to do is a flyby first, then we're going to focus on orbiting it. And at the same time, I'm going to attach all of the scanners that we have so we can get lovely detailed maps of Ash. Once we have all of those lovely detailed maps, well, we are going to be sending down an uncrewed lander and then maybe a rover afterwards. And as soon as all of that's done, well, it's time to focus on the crewed missions to Ash. And that will be a fair while away yet because there's a lot that we need to research first. There's a lot that we need to do. There's a lot of valuable information that I do not know yet in order to send a crew over there. But this is going to be our flyby mission. It's going to be very simple. It's got solar panels. It's got a bit of RCS, an engine, thermometers, communications devices, cameras. Basically, yeah, it's a simple probe if, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest. Nothing more to it than that. And we are going to whack it on a Harpy 3 uh, <laughs> just because it's, it's really cheap. And then we will launch it. And there we go. Here we have Hot 1. And I called it Hot 1 because if I'm going to be honest, I couldn't really think of a name. And looking at Ash, it's got lava. It's hot. So Hot 1, if anyone can think of a good acronym for that for this spacecraft then feel free to leave it in the comments because <laughs> I've been trying to think of a good acronym or a backronym even, and I just can't come up with one. But what I do want to do to actually get to Ash, I kind of want to do a gravity assist from Lua. And well, I have done this before and I have managed to get a really good flyby of Ash by doing this. Unfortunately, this time, for whatever reason, I couldn't quite get it. Not, not as well as I had before anyway, so I have had to create another maneuver over at Lua so that we can kind of burn towards Ash a little bit more. But uh, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's hardly any more Delta V than we'd be using anyway. There we go. We can see we are burning at Lua now and we are going to be on our way to that volcanic moon. There it is coming into sight now. Isn't it beautiful? All of that lava. Lots of lava. Lava is very dangerous, <laughs> as I will find out later on in this episode. Even not landing, not landing in lava, but landing near lava is just as bad. Yeah, the coasts have a big thermal hazard warning on them. Probably should have paid attention to that. But we got our flyby, and now Hop 1 is actually going to be our first ever interplanetary probe. We are leaving Road Sphere of Influence, so that'll get us even more science. With the data transmitted back from Hot 1, we have made advancements in solar panel technology. And also because we've been launching a lot of vehicles, we've decided we need bigger fuel tanks. So we've picked that up as well. Talking of bigger fuel tanks, 
We are now going to be working on our ash scanner and we will get to the bigger fuel tanks later on. So this is just going to be a scanner that we put in a polar orbit of ash and we are just going to keep it there whilst we get some beautiful detailed maps of the surface. So this is going to be ever so slightly different from previous probe designs in the fact that it's a little bit more interesting because it's not just a probe core with solar panels attached to it. No, I decided, yeah, let's whack some structural components on there and stick some RCS on it for absolutely no reason other than I thought it might look a little bit cooler. So <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason why we've got that on. And oh, well, this thing has all of the scanners that we are going to require. High and low res altimetry, low res visual, low res resources as well. It's, it's got a lot of scanners on. It really does have a lot of scanners on. And yeah, so <laughs> that's, that's basically it. We're going to be scanning ash. That is the aim. And I've got a, well, I wanted to use a Hoppy 4 for this, for the launch vehicle. Unfortunately, as you are about to see, well, yeah, <laughs> the fairings are ludicrously big for that very long, thin rocket. It would look ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So I decided let's actually make ourselves a bigger launch vehicle now that we have bigger tanks and this is of course going to be harpy 5 and we are going to go back to how we used to build harpy rockets the rpsa have decided that the solid rocket booster first stage is a tried and tested design and they want to keep using it so harpy 5 we are just going to have a huge solid rocket booster as our first stage and then our second stage is from kw rocket tree and it's basically the aj10 137 equivalent from that i believe and yeah this thing this thing is it's quite powerful it's quite powerful one thing that i did want to do with this rocket as well is i did want to try and recover that first stage so i have attached a couple of parachutes in there unfortunately I didn't attach a probe core, so we're not going to be able to do anything with it, but in, well, in the future, I have actually gone back in, re-edited this, given it a probe core so we do have control. I do also now have FMRS, so I do have a mod that should hopefully allow me to recover the first stage. It's not always going to be possible because it depends on the payload that we're sending to orbit. A heavier payload, there is a lot more chance that we will recover the first stage because it won't go as high so there's less chance of it burning up or smashing into the ground when we try and recover it so yeah the lighter a payload is the less chance we're actually going to recover our first stage which does seem a bit backwards but now ash scan has been built it's been rolled out to the launch pad and of course this is going to be the first ever launch of a harpy 5 and i did mention it in the build section this thing is very, very powerful, and the payload that we've got doesn't actually weigh a particularly large amount. So we really, really, really start to see some of those re-entry effects as we are going up. This isn't as bad as one variant of this rocket that I have done, but yeah, so things got a little bit toasty. Luckily, we do have that rather large fairing at the front to protect all of the valuable and quite fragile scientific experiments that are going to be placed on this probe. I'm sure if we didn't have that fairing, those solar panels would have been blasted to pieces. But there you go, they have been deployed now. So the reason why there was a little bit of a quick weird transition there is, for some reason in my game, whenever I use fairings, it always thinks that the solar panels are stowed even after getting rid of the fairings. So in order to fix that, I have to quick save and quick load all the time which is a little bit annoying, but I like to cut all of that out so you don't see those, those saves and those loads. But you can see we are on our way to Ash now, and we're just going to perform a little bit of a quick burn to fix our inclination. Try and get that as close to 90 degrees as possible. And then that way, well, we will be scanning the entire moon. So I have finally, finally, unlocked MechJeb Maneuver Node Editor and MechJeb Maneuver Planner and oh I am so thankful that I've got that back. It's so nice just being able to actually let MechJeb do maneuvers every now and then and then I can get some much better cinematics because I don't have to be paying attention to when I need to start or finish my burn. I started this series off obviously not really using MechJeb at all but as it goes on I will be using it more and more to try and get a few better cinematics. So 
One thing that I wanted to do with Ashcan as well is I wanted to dump every single stage that I no longer needed onto the surface of Ash, and then that way we're not leaving any space debris that, well, we can get rid of. It'd be nice. We want to avoid Kessler Syndrome as much as possible around road. We don't want the skies or the stars or the, the space, the void, the void of space. Yeah, we don't want to fill all of that up with rubbish. So we are going to try and get rid of as much of it as possible. So I have actually gotten rid of our next stage by sending it slamming into the surface of Ash. Kind of lucky that I brought along all that RCS fuel so we can actually recircularize our orbit so that this scanner doesn't go slamming into the surface of Ash as well. This is the valuable thing. This is the thing we do want to keep in orbit. So yeah, <laughs> and there you go. We can see we've got a lovely polar orbit of Ash and we're gonna be getting some lovely maps. With that polar orbit of Ash, we did gain an awful lot of science. We also gained a lot of information about the surface of the moon. So when it comes to building a lander and when it comes to sending that lander, we have quite a bit of an idea where we want to land. But speaking of, let's actually build the lander. Once again, we're going to be coming into the vehicle assembly building for the final time in this episode where we are going to be working on our first ever Ash Lander. So Ash is actually a lot harder to land on than I first anticipated, and you do need quite a fair bit of Delta V. This is only going to be a tiny, tiny, tiny little lander. So we do have those Chickadee engines, I believe they're called. Basically, they are monopropellant engines, which is why we have those four rather large monopropellant tanks on the side, and our final descent is going to be controlled by them. We've got some seismic scanners. That is new technology that I have unlocked. So we are going to see all about the seismic activity on Ash. They are seismic scanners, so I don't know what else we would really be, well, experimenting with those. I don't know. We could potentially launch some Kerbals at the surface and see how much impact a Kerbal impact has on the moon, but I don't really want to be killing anyone, so that's probably not an idea that I'm going to follow through with. We do have all kinds of things on this. We have communications, we have cameras, all of the scientific experiments that are going to be necessary to fully try and abuse the biomes on Ash to get as much science as we possibly can. Obviously, we do need some batteries as well, so those have been tucked away in the bottom and I did actually forget to put solar panels on and it took me quite a while to figure out where I wanted to place these. I eventually settled on the top of those RCS tanks because I couldn't really find anywhere else that fit. So yeah, that is going to be our lander. And like I said, it is absolutely tiny. It is a baby lander. It is, it is very small. Very, very, very small. But despite the fact that it is very small, well, we are going to do great things with this lander. It is obviously going to land on Ash and hopefully it will gain us a lot more science and a lot more funding. I have picked up contracts for Ash, so we are ready for this. But here we go. Alisea 1 on a Harpy 3. So that stands for the Ash Lander and Surface Science Experiment Agent. And for those that may not know, Alisea is who I play Minecraft with. So she wanted a name, a rocket named after her in this series. So I thought I would comply. And to be honest, because it's Ash and it starts with an A, I found it quite easy to come up with something for this. But usually my acronyms, I spend a long time scratching my head trying to actually figure out what I want to call my craft, as you <laughs> yeah, may know from earlier on in this episode. So we have got ourselves into orbit. Now it is just plotting out a maneuver node to go over to Ash, and we are going to light up that Mothra Stage 2 engine, the ridiculously overpowered engine, which actually, as it turns out, isn't that overpowered. It's just because the probes that I've been using have been very small, very lightweight, but they are probably just about as good as a standard KSP engine. But we have made it over to Ash, and we are going to fire up that engine once again so that we can capture. And this was an issue because I did not want to use any of that stage to actually capture. And that means we do not have a lot of Delta V left. We have barely any Delta V left. And actually, we now have, well, pretty much run out. <laughs> so 
We are coming down very, very fast, and we do not have enough fuel to slow ourselves down. This was a really, really bad design idea, and yeah, the Harpy 3, unfortunately, was not enough. It's not a big enough of a rocket. We need to build bigger to actually land ourselves on the surface of Ash. It's fine for doing a flyby, absolutely fine, but no, actually landing, <laughs> yeah, we need something bigger. So what are we going to do? We're just going to stick it on a Harpy 4. <laughs> and yeah, this didn't take a long time to design at all. So yeah, no, I just went back to the vehicle assembly building, quickly grabbed the Harpy 3, removed it, and then placed the Harpy 4 on. And we're going to be doing exactly the same mission again, this time with a bigger launch vehicle. There go the payload fairings. Look at them go off into the distance whilst we scream our way into space, into orbit. I have slightly adjusted, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. I have slightly modified the Heart before. I have changed the first stage engine to one that has a little bit higher thrust to weight ratio because the last time I used it, it wasn't really enough. When the solid rocket booster separated, we only had about 0.6 thrust to weight ratio which really isn't a lot at all. Even, yeah, no, it, it just couldn't get us to orbit nicely. So I have made a slight edit on there, but we have made our way over to Ash yet again. We are in Ash's sphere of influence and we are going to slow ourselves down. So Ash actually takes quite a long time to get to, about 11 in-game days, a lot more than it takes to get to Lua, which is only about four or five hours. So we are starting our descent yet again. This time we do have quite a considerable amount more of Delta V. So I am not worried in the slightest that we are gonna be able to land. No, we've got more than enough Delta V to land. Now comes the tricky part of not landing in the lava. So I did want to land as close to the lava as I possibly could, because I thought it would be a really cool place to land. Little did I know, that the coastlines next to the lava are still piping hot. Of course they are. They're very, very close to a molten lake of lava. But <laughs> I did not think about this. And now I'm actually trying to get closer to the molten lake of lava. You can see what I meant, that I really wanted to get as close as I possibly could. So there was a lot of wiggling around as we made our final descent. But we had more than enough Delta V to do that. But there we go. We have released those stages and we are now bringing our tiny, our small boy lander down right next to that very, very, very hot molten lake of lava. <laughs> and yeah, as soon as we touch the ground, well, the entire thing blows up, but it's not too bad. We still got the contract for landing on Ash. Now we are going to be turning to our last launch of this episode, and it's wheels! It's wheels! I don't know why it's called wheels, but it's wheels! Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we are going to be sending a rover over to Ash, because I thought, yeah, we've sent landers, neither of them worked, but we might as well send a rover over as well. So you can see what I mean earlier, that the Harpy 5, with a bad flight profile, it kind of gets a bit explodey as you are going into orbit, so <laughs> that's definitely something that is a little bit concerning, but not too bad. We made it up to orbit in one piece, and for some reason, I decided rather than getting a stable orbit, you know what I'll do? When we get to our Apple apps, I'll just burn for ash, because I did notice that it was there. It was in a good place, so I thought, yeah, let's just, let's just burn for ash. We might as well. We save a little bit of time. I'm not even really sure if we save that much time. There is the time warp function, so we're not really saving much time. It just, I was, I was being a bit lazy, if I'm gonna be honest. Just, I was like, yeah, let's, let's do the burn as soon as we get to our Apple apps and get over to Ash as soon as possible. But there is Road in the background looking very, very beautiful. It's a lovely planet. It, it does really look nice. I love all of the planets that I visited in this planet pack so far. Lua looks fantastic. Ash looks amazing. Road is gorgeous. I can't wait to start actually going to some of the far-flung planets. Gateway is somewhere I am definitely interested in seeing. 
and hopefully even landing something on the surface of that supposed gas giant. Well, there are definitely, there's definitely somewhere to land, so that'll be quite fun to try and come down there. Probably won't be sending Kerbals though, considering the sheer amount <laughs> of gravity that they will be subject to and atmospheric pressure. No, that will almost certainly be an uncrewed probe. But now we are coming down to Ash. This time we are not next to a gigantic lake of lava, so we have nothing to worry about. And we have Delta V for days. We've got almost 800 left by the time we actually touch down on the surface. So, nothing to worry about whatsoever. And of course, wouldn't be a rover if we didn't get it out and start roving. <laughs> is, well, is that what they do? Do they, do they rove? Does a rover rove? It's one of life's greatest mysteries. But <laughs> you can see I had a little bit of an issue actually getting this out of the service bay, the payload bay. Yeah, <laughs> this wasn't the best of designs. It is a really simple rover. I didn't show the build for it because I thought, you know, it'll be a big reveal and all of that, but it's really simple. It's just one of the rover cores with a few science experiments strapped to it, a few lights, some solar panels, and obviously it's got wheels. It wouldn't really be much of a rover if it didn't have wheels. Cameras as well, how could I forget that? And I did try and get a few shots with the front cam, but unfortunately it kind of went a bit messy, so, no camera shots today, unfortunately. Instead, we just get a wheel's eye view as we make our way up to the highlands. There you go, we can see we did actually come quite far. But with that, that is the end of this episode with the successful touchdown of, it was wheels, wasn't it? Wheel, why did I call it wheels? Wheels, could have thought of so many things, but wheels was what came to my head. I, I really don't know. Yeah, no, that is the end of this episode. There will be future episodes coming soon. If you have enjoyed it, why not drop it a like? If you've really enjoyed this and want to keep up with the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing. I have been Karnassa, and I will see you later.